Now, first of all, this morning, there's growing pressure <laughs> on the chair of one of the inquiries into historical allegations of child abuse to step down. Fiona Wolfe, the Lord Mayor of London, is the second person to be appointed to the role, but now some MPs, victims of child abuse and their legal teams have said that she's not a suitable person to lead the inquiry. In July, claims of an establishment cover-up of historical child sex abuse involving public figures, including politicians, prompted Home Secretary Theresa May to announce two inquiries, one of which was set up to investigate the way public bodies and other non-state institutions have handled child sex abuse claims, led by former judge Elizabeth Buckler-Sloss. Of particular concern was a dossier handed to Leon Britton, who was Home Secretary in the early 80s. It alleged that some politicians were involved in a paedophile ring. Within a week, Elizabeth Buckler-Sloss was forced to stand down because of questions about the way her late brother, Sir Michael Havers, who was Attorney General in the 1980s, had handled information in that dossier. On the 5th of September, the Home Secretary announced that Fiona Wolfe, a lawyer, would now chair the inquiry. However, in a letter to Theresa May, Ms Wolfe said that she had hosted three dinner events for former Home Secretary Leon Britton and dined at their home twice since 2008. This was raised when she appeared at the Home Affairs Select Committee yesterday. And by my reckoning, you've had you know, five dinner parties with him. You've met his wife on several occasions for coffee privately. That is more, I mean, that's more frequently than I've, met, than I've seen some of my... Some members of my family. Um. <laughs> this is an inquiry about a lot of in hundreds of institutions and thousands of failures. My 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 dinner parties with Lord Britain were at a time uh, when I was a newly elected alderman and I needed to build my city network. Fiona Wolfe there. Well, I'm joined now by the Labour MP, Simon Danchuk, who has investigated historical cases of child abuse by Cyril Smith in his own constituency of Rochdale. Simon Danchuk, do you think Fiona Wolfe should go? I think she should go, and I say that reluctantly, really, because we need to get uh, some progress in terms of this inquiry, but she's clearly not suitable for the role. Her performance at the uh, Home Affairs Select Committee uh, yesterday was very disappointing, and I'm sure that the survivors of child abuse will be disappointed that this woman is their champion effectively because uh, she's too connected uh, to the establishment more importantly she's too connected to Sir Leon Britton and he's somebody that this uh, inquiry will have to investigate because of his role as Home Secretary at the height of a lot of this uh, controversy around uh, child sex abuse. Right well you say it's her connection to Leon Britton I mean how connected has she been? Uh, inviting someone round for dinner or having the odd dinner party together, does that really mean they have a close friendship? Well, I would say so. Where I come from, if you have somebody round for dinner on five occasions and, you know, you meet them on a relatively regular basis, you would say that they were good friends and that's just not acceptable. You can't have somebody uh, chairing this inquiry that doesn't carry the confidence, not just of the public, but as importantly, uh, the confidence of the survivors of child sex abuse. And all the messages I get from the survivors is that Fiona Wolfe is completely unsuitable for the job. But do you accept that all this prevarication, as you yourself uh, said at the beginning of this interview, only serves to delay the important work that needs to be carried out yeah. on child abuse and every time a new candidate is put forward and <clears throat> found to be inappropriate in your words, it's just delayed further. Yes, no, it is delaying it, and that's what's so unsuitable, unsuitable uh, about this. Uh, we do need to make progress. What I would suggest is that Fiona Wolf uh, steps aside and we use one of the panel members. There's a great panel of people surrounding uh, the chair oh. uh, with lots of experience on these issues. One of those could step forward and effectively chair the uh, inquiry and then progress can be made. But you, people are left wondering why the government have handled this in such a way, why we get to a position where they're appointing somebody who is so close to somebody who needs to be investigated by the inquiry. It does beg belief, really. Right. Well, you, the sort of implication there in your comments is that there's some sort of conspiracy going on in terms of who's being appointed by the government. Well, you can't help but wonder that. And, and many of the survivors are suspicious of uh, the government's handling of this. They haven't acted very quickly from the initial uh, announcement that there was going to be an inquiry. Things have dragged on over the summer, and now they appoint a second chair who's wholly unsuitable. I just don't get it. And I think the Home Secretary should explain, you know, what, what checks were made in terms of Fiona Wolf. Did they not realise that she was so close to Sir Leon Britton when they appointed her? I mean, it begs belief. It really does. Simon Danchuk of Westminster, thank you. Uh, 
Mark Harper, what qualifications does Fiona Wolf have to lead an inquiry into child abuse? Well, I think it's two things, um, and Simon actually put his finger on it there. The other thing the Home Secretary announced yesterday were the rest of the panel members. And my understanding is the panel consists of the people that will be assisting Fiona Wolfe, consist of experts in a variety of but fields. But what qualifications relevant. does she have? Well, what she, her job is to chair the inquiry, and my understanding is she has she's no qualifications. A, well, well, if you'd let me finish answering the question. She's an experienced lawyer, she's an experienced chair. I understand she has experience, for example, of chairing the Competition Commission. So her role is to chair the inquiry. The inquiry panel which was appointed yesterday with specialists in relevant fields uh, who I understand all back all right. Fiona Wolf's so position as chair um, will be assisting us so it's not a the thing is it's not a all one right. woman band this this is a, no, a panel. I understand this inquiry she's the chairman so, of it all right she's got a whole range of people to assist so if the only inquiry. qualification required was was the qualification to be able to chair something not of any expertise in the area but simply to chair something why can you find someone who wasn't a friend of Liam Britton's well, she's got. She's an experienced lawyer, which I think is important. But plenty of them because, around the country are washing lawyers. She's an experienced lawyer. She's an experienced chair. She's got a panel of experienced people who all support her appointment. But the panel's separate. Including, I understand, sure. someone right. on the panel who is themselves a victim of child abuse, and they've come out and supported Sure, but that's the panel. Opinion. I'm asking about her. So <clears throat> we need an experienced chair. Mm -hmm. We need somebody who's a lawyer. You seem to be saying as well. The why that escapes me. So a chair and a lawyer. We couldn't find a chair and a lawyer who wasn't a friend of Liam Britton's. Well, I think the point that Simon was making, I don't think it's quite right. My understanding, having listened to her evidence yesterday, is that she, she, she knew Liam Britton in a, in a business sense, uh, and, and she made that very clear, and I think she set that out for the Home Secretary and the Committee. Uh, I, don't, I think she said uh, in her evidence they, she wasn't close friends with him at all. Really? Um, well, she, and, she made it, and she made she... it quite clear that she did not have any conflict of interest that would... She, uh, yeah, she make, would claim that, but she, lives on, the, she lives on the same street as Liam Britton. She dines with him. She invited Lord and Lady Britain to a dinner party at the residence. There were then two mm -hmm. further dinner parties at the residence. They live in the same street as it. So we couldn't find a lawyer chairman that hadn't been a good friend of Liam Britain's. Well, I don't think I don't think she was a good friend. She was making. Oh, a okay. Strike the word good networking. and let's just call she, a she friend. She knew him. Um, you know, I don't think that rule well, is doing Yeah, right but Liam Britton is key in this. His role as Home Secretary is a crucial mm. part of this yeah. inquiry. So we couldn't find some. Given that you've accepted mm -hmm. she has no qualifications in the child abuse area at all, unlike the previous one that mm -hmm. you appointed, Chair Butler Schloss, mm. who was also yep. too close yeah, to the establishment. Her, yeah, my understanding so, is her role is, is to be the chair. She's an experienced lawyer so, and she's an experienced so why was the first? A, and she has a panel of. Sure, I understand that, but why was the first work? chair that you chose mm -hmm. an expert in child abuse? And why has it suddenly not become necessary to have an expert in child abuse second time round? Well, I, I, D Dame but uh, Baroness Butler Sloss uh, was clearly very well qualified in the area of family mm. law. She was an experienced judge. Um, I think it was her family relationship with the former Attorney General that ruled her out of that, and she herself then okay. concluded that she shouldn't put herself forward. And I don't think that same relationship is in place in this case. I mean, the, the British establishment is still so close knit in 2014, you can't yeah. find anyone who's independent. That's the truth of it. No, I don't, I don't think that's right. Well, at all. Should she go? Well, I just think. Someone said on Twitter today, surely in the whole of the country we can find someone to head this up who hasn't had dinner with Leon Britton. Whether or not it's a good friend. Oh, or I think not. that's a big category. Well, I mean, I'd be... And also, I mean, I'll, get, I'll, give you, I'll give you a name. I don't know if you want to. I've not had dinner with Jim Leon Britton. Jim Gamble, who, a police officer, that was his uh, profession, but he headed up the online child protection yes. unit. He could be someone. I'm not saying he wants to do it, but there's a name. I knew him when I was working at the Home Office. Uh, there must be other people as well. But it's, you're right, when it comes to these things, we end up with a very small, nipped, mm close-knit group of people, right. judges, QCs and whatever, and it's somehow that they have got some tremendous powers of chairing things and uh, gathering and working so with a team of people. And I just think we're, we're better than that and we're bigger than that. Do and you I feel that she should go? I think it's really difficult for her to stay. If the victims are mm -hmm. saying they don't have trust in her, we'll, well never get moving you, on this inquiry. You raise an important point that I haven't raised with Mark Harper. We've now got lawyers. Mm. Uh, first of all, the government has maintained throughout that this inquiry is all about the victims. That's why we're having mm -hmm. the inquiry. It is the victims, mm -hmm. naturally. And that can only be right. Mm -hmm. 
Lawyers now, on behalf of the victims, are saying they have no confidence in her. Indeed, one is mounting a legal mm. challenge against her. Well, I saw that, but also my understanding is one she, of the people go. appointed to be on the panel uh, actually is a victim of child abuse themselves, and they have confidence in her. So, I mean, you're always going to find somebody that doesn't have confidence in somebody, but I mean, I think her qualifications are very good. She's not doing this by herself. She's not a sole no. appointee. She's got a team of people she'll that be, she's going she'll to be, be leading. She'll be gone by the weekend, won't she? No, I, I, I think that... Her don't you think? She'll be gone by I the don't, weekend. Look, I don't blame her. I mean, the government, they had a second chance to do this properly, and I think they've put this woman in a, a really difficult position now, and mm. they need to sort it out, and we need to get on with things, and I just don't think at this stage it's viable that she's the person that leads this and takes it forward. I mean, you don't blame her even though she's a corporate lawyer. I mean, how bad does <laughs> it get? I'm past president of the Chelsea <laughs> Opera Group. Well, I mean, it's yeah. not... That's, that's... We'll just move on, shall we? <laughs> Just leave that hanging. That's I not think, a sin uh, necessarily. Andrew. <laughs>